Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channel Television. A reminder of our major stories. Emergency workers rescue 36 people and recover four bodies at the site of the collapsed seven-story building in Port Harcourt River State. More people reportedly still buried in the rubble. President Buhari reacts to the killing of soldiers in Metele Bronu State, says Nigeria will overcome the threat posed by Boko Haram insurgents. Military declares victory against armed herdsmen in Benue, Taraba, and Nasarawa State, says displaced farmers safe to return to their ancestral homes. And European Union set to approve Brexit deal as Spanish government drops threat to boycott tomorrow's summit over disagreement on British territory of Gibraltar. ChannelsTV.com has more information for you and go to YouTube.com forward slash channels web to view our videos. Watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. And besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature so you can use it to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. The recent report on the killings of some soldiers in Bornu State by Boko Haram insurgents has perhaps raised concerns on a possible upsurge in attacks by the deadly group and threat to the lives of Nigerians in the Northeast region. The attack also raises questions on the claims of victory against the insurgents and the level of preparedness of the Nigerian military in times of an ambush. Is this a sign that all is not well in the theater of war? That's a question I'll be asking our guests shortly. But first, let's take this report on the latest strike by the insurgents. It seems an unending war between Boko Haram insurgents and government forces. For more than nine years now, the rage continues with successive governments pulling up different strategies operation code names, and even change of command and control. All at a huge cost, estimated to run into billions of Naira. It hurts them to know that we know that they are decimated. The government claims the terrorist group has been decimated and defeated technically. But that is now being put to question, especially with the recent killing of Nigerian soldiers by the insurgents. No one is given details on how it all happened and how the soldiers who are considered to be part of the continent's strongest military force were taken out. This raises questions about the armor strength of the Nigerian military, its tactical prowess and ability to face insurrection head-on from a group considered not big enough to face the nation's military. To lose 40 of them in one day should be a matter of concern. I'm not sure we're taking good care of the safety of our soldiers. I think we're just throwing them on harm's way, and nobody cares. The National Assembly has spoken, expressing its worries over the death of the soldiers and their welfare in the battlefield. They want to, as a matter of urgency, know if indeed the military is well equipped to face unforeseen uprising, especially considering the chunk of the nation's wealth devoted to the fight against terrorism in the Northeast. And let's get some perspective on this disturbing issue. I'm being joined by a retired Army officer, Colonel Hassan Stan Lambo, joins us on the News at 10. You're welcome. Thank you, Eddie. Now, how would you react to the recent increase of attacks by Boko Haram terrorists, especially on the military? Uh, well, I must say this, frankly speaking. Uh, we are going through some very really tough times now. Uh, but as a nation, or even the military itself and so on. Uh, at a time when we are thinking that um, we've probably surpassed where we think we are now, only for us to see us, um, you know, uh, would I say being embarrassed again by the belligerent forces through all these attacks and so on. You know, um, it is indicative of the fact that um, we really have got to go back 
to the, to drawing, the drawing board, board like it's often been said and uh, be able to do some real 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 thinking okay we have to look at the whole situation again even revisit our kpis if possible run a swot you know and uh, even look at our job descriptions and so on and see where are we really failing where have we not been able to meet objectives and requirements okay and uh, address some of this and of course in the course of doing that too there are certain realities in terms of deficits both internal or extraneous that deficit, we have to be deficit like what uh, we are talking here about uh, funding deficits, manpower deficits, equipment and logistics deficits, okay? Uh, 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 welfare deficits, which of course would impact on morale. And that brings okay? me to my and next so question, because there are reports of grumbling within, <coughs> amongst the soldiers yeah. about not having enough equipment, weapons, to fight the Boko Haram insurgents. Well, a lot of people thought that was a thing of the past, and this administration would have addressed such issues. You, 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 you can never finish equipping an army that is at war. I'm trying to educate the public now. Okay. You can never finish equipping an army that is at war. You keep funding. You keep pouring in. I want to call it investment. Maybe that's the language a lot of people will understand out there. Okay? In terms of equipment and so on, Look, you are at a competition with even the opponent, or in this case, the belligerent. You buy an Alpha 2-1, he buys an Alpha 2-5. Mm. So in the and case so of on. superior you firepower. Buy, you, you buy an, an, an SMG, he comes out with a bigger firepower equipment. And so you try to see how you can surpass him. You are at a war. You are at a war. Unfortunately, we have not really understood it here. So for every cover we pump into the military, we assume we've taken care of that. You can never take care of that until the war is over. You continue to feed men and feed them adequately. You continue to address their welfare problems. Morocco, while they were fighting the Sahrawi Democratic Republic uh, war, were paying their troops who were at the battlefront two salaries. The man at the battlefront earns two salaries. I'm just citing some examples, okay. and so on. Okay, look, and then, I know we are in a haste to get out of this, because definitely, of course, we should be in a haste to get out of it. But we should understand this is not a conventional warfare. This is terrorism. Look at how long it took the, 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 the what do they call them? Uh, is it uh, Malaysia or, or uh, 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 this country that was at war with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the Tigers? It took them about 25 years to come out of that. Okay, they have only just come out of it, not too long. 25 good years. The Tamil Tigers, thank you. Okay, the point I'm trying to make here is that we've got to be patient. This is an unconventional war. But that we've got to be patient does not mean that we wouldn't be doing the right things and putting the right steps in the right direction. So going forward now, what do you suggest? How do we nip this in the bud? Fine. We should please resolve to face this war squarely. Nigeria is at war. Whether you want to accept it or you don't want to accept it, Nigeria is at war. We want to get out of this mess and get out of it as quickly as possible. So we must commit enough resources in terms of funding. We must begin to ask real questions and find out and ensure that religious are actually going for what we want them to go for and they are getting right to the bottom the end user is having enough value for whatever releases that have been made. Our politicians in the House who should be doing the necessary approvals should be on the same page with the military. A situation where the military is on a different page from those who should be appropriating. It's unfortunate. We should be speaking in one language and face this squarely. As much as possible, a good number of us are busy on the social media doing all sorts of funny things, which at the end of the day plays out the intentions or helps the intentions of the enemy force or belligerent force. We should caution ourselves on whatever we go and post in the social media. They are not daft. They also read. The guys behind them 
are not just like their foot soldiers whom you see. You have professors and doctorate degree holders behind them. Find sound guys doing the thinking for them. Many thanks for speaking with us, Colonel Hassan Stan Lambo. Other stories now. The Sultan of Sokoto has asked Nigerians to hold President Muhammad Buhari to his words on the conduct of free, fair, and credible general election in 2019. The Emir mentioned this at the 2018 Second General Meeting of the Nigeria Interreligious Council Youth Wing Summit. On his part, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, is asking the police and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to be honest in their election services in order to guarantee national peace and security. The Sultan of Sokoto, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria and other principal members of the Nigeria Interreligious Council are present in this hall in Abuja to discuss how to ensure the peaceful conduct of the 2019 general elections. This is the third time in one week that the religious leaders are converging in Abuja for the same purpose. Unlike some of the other meetings where much attention was fixed on politicians contesting the 2019 general elections, much of the discussions here center on the role of the electoral umpire, the security agents, and the youths who form a critical mass of the electorate. The success of this forthcoming election is very, very crucial to the future of Nigeria. It is in the atmosphere of peace that there come the progress. We especially thank God because it's coming at a time where the youth have to make up their mind not to be used for foulness in this forthcoming election. The president has vowed that he will ensure a violence-free campaign. The free, fair, and credible elections in this country come 2019. So we hold him to his words. And you also want to hold the security agencies to the president's words because the president said he would never, he would rather lose election than read. So I need to take note of what the president said. The security agencies, especially the police, police. <laughs> Police. Police. The president has been. The National Security Advisor, who is represented at the event, reaffirms President Buhari's commitment to ensuring a free, fair, and credible general election next year. Every group in Nigeria, especially the youths, have the duty to ensure that we maintain a peaceful electoral process in the country. I therefore want to use this opportunity to inform this important guardian that the administration of President Buhari is making all necessary preparations to ensure credible, free and fair elections. The 2019 general election is less than three months from now and campaigns have commenced. The need to constantly dialogue with stakeholders for a peaceful election cannot be overemphasized. Not less than 34 suspected members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, have been arrested for allegedly attacking police officers and for the murder of a police inspector in Newi, Anambra State. This is according to the police spokesperson in the state, Haruna Mohammed, who explained in a statement that the IPOB members attacked the police officers and killed an inspector in the process. He says his men went there following an intelligence report that members of the proscribed group were sighted in their hundreds near the teaching hospital on Uwe Road, Newi, with intent to cause a breach of the public peace. The statement adds, and I quote, Following the report, police patrol teams led by the area commander in Newi, ACP Nanna Ama, mobilized and rushed to the scene in order to disperse and prevent them from causing a breakdown of law and order. However, as soon as the police arrived the scene, the rampaging IPOB members descended on the police, set ablaze one patrol vehicle, and attacked them with machetes and stones. End of quote. The police, however, called for calm, giving the assurance that efforts are being intensified to recover and apprehend more suspects. When the news at 10 returns, 
The Central Bank of Nigeria releases third quarter economic report says country's total revenue dropped by 24% against 2018 budget 